Welcome back to Worthington Model Railway. Uh, 25th of April and it's snowing outside, but that's Minnesota for you. Uh, on my last video, I talked about the fact that I needed to put a DCC chip into this J70. So, um, no time like the present. That's what I'm going to do this morning. And uh, we'll uh, come back once we get ourselves all sorted out. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you're enjoying the videos. I'm trying to pump them out at a rate. I'm also going to try to pump out some shorter ones. I think sometimes the longer ones, I know when I'm looking at videos, I don't always have an hour to look at a video. So uh, if I'm, I'm going to do some shorter ones. This one probably won't be that long. So I mentioned in my last video that uh, this J70 needed fitting with a six pin DCC decoder. So uh, we have the, the manual and also a blow up parts list. So I got to work out how to get it open so I can get the decoder. Uh, this is just a standard DCC decoder. It's not a sound decoder. It's a Zen V12. So we'll get this fitted and programmed and show you the process. Well, Rapido produce a very nice little uh, manual here and shows you how to take it apart. It looks like um, take the plastic body off using a long stem screw crosshead screwdriver undo the four screws in the corner of the underside. And then there's some instructions here for uh, fitting the six pin decoder socket. So uh, let's get it opened up and uh, put the socket in. Working on the locos, I like to use a little cradle. Uh, you can buy one from Pico, or you can do what I did. Uh, just get some foam packing, cut it up, and glue it together. Works perfectly well. So we'll drop this in here and find the right screwdriver, which I think is probably going to be this one. And we'll get these screws out. And I'll be right back. Screws came out very easily. This is the fourth one. Um, I like to drop the screws into a container so I know where they live. The bottom of this screwdriver is magnetized so that helps. I'll put those out of the way where I know where they are when I need to find them. And then let's see if we can uh, get this body off. This is die cast on the bottom. Yep. Doesn't seem to want to come that easily. All right, let me get this done and I'll come back. I actually read the instructions. I would see that you have to take the, um, the couplers out and then lifts out. Actually, it's very nice, very solid in there. Look at all that weight that they have inside there. It's very nice. Okay, so we'll put that, I'll put it back in my cradle so it doesn't get damaged. Okay, so looking at this, looks like uh, this is this needs to come out. So let me just show you what I'm doing here. So this this is the plate. Get my fingers are in the way but the blanking plates right there and uh, get this to focus focus please thank you blanking plates right there pulling it out and pull that plate out and then I'm not sure if this will go straight in or if I need to use this I prefer not to have to use that because it's a little too much uh, I'm going to try to see if this will slide in. Yeah, it looks like it will. Okay, let's take this over to the test track, which I have now moved because it was sort of a problem keeping putting it up and down on my workbench. And uh, so just to keep things more easy, I've moved the test bed. So we'll wander over there and we'll put it in the test bed. We'll program it and see what we can do with it. Remember in my last video, um, I showed the uh, DCC Composite Rolling Road, which is what I'm going to use to program this because I should be able to program it fine on the test track on top of the Rolling Road. We'll find out though. So, um, 
Here's my uh, NC power cab. I don't know if you can see, but I'll try to put it where you can see it. The first thing I need to do is I need to go into use program track and hit enter. And I want to do a standard. Okay, and it's telling me to wait. And hopefully it's uh, reading that CV, the, the uh, decoder. Cannot read CV. Okay, I wonder if I have it in upside down. Let me check. I'll be right back. Sure enough, I had it upside down. So we get the manufacturer. And hit enter. Decoder version is nine. Set up a short address. Yes. Short address should come as three. We take the default. Activate. Yes. Long address. I get what these addresses I'm using for this. Give me one second. So the number for this local is 739739. Seven, we'll press enter. Activate this address. Yes. And then we can just escape. I'm not going to do anything else with it right now apart from make sure it works. So we started. There we go. It's starting to run. One second here. Turn this down. You get the camera a little closer so you can see what's going on. So let's uh, run this up in a forward direction. Oh boy. Strange, what's going on? There we go. And uh, we can do a reverse on the direction. This local has already been running on DCs, so it should be pretty good. Reverse direction again. Okay, I think, uh, I think we're good to go. Let's put it back together and we'll stick it on the track. So, here we have it running on the road. It's uh, full speed. Let's change the direction. The nice thing about DCC is it automatically slows down. And we'll restart it. We're at top speed here, so... Let's slow the speed down a little. A realistic speed. So here we are back on the layout. Um, I had to move the J70 across onto the DCC line. Um, where the J83 is on the, uh, the green one there, that's on the DC line. So I actually have two different layouts. I have part of my layout is DCC and part is DC will allow me to run both components. So um, let's start up the, uh, the J70 that we just fitted the decoder in. 